because I am apparently a glutton for punishment, I recently found myself back in the bowels of Wattpad fanfics. I mean, while most of them are poorly written, the people who write them, they have a great imagination. Let's just leave it at that. A fantastic imagination. Anyway, <laughs> the horrible fanfic I have selected for today, for your utter and sheer enjoyment, of course, is one between Squidward and Spongebob. Please no, please no, that's horrible. I mean, I was a little surprised, if you can be surprised on Wattpad, that there were so many fanfics written between Squidward and Spongebob, but then you gotta remember, like, for some reason there were like a, a good amount of people who shipped them. Remember that? I mean, it's still, it's still an ongoing thing, obviously. I just don't see it at all. Like, people are just so desperate to ship any and every character they can. But Squidward and Spongebob? What? Alright, so buckle up for today's story and kiss your childhood goodbye. <laughs> <clears throat> Spongebob opens his eyes to the melodic squawking tune drifting in through his open bedroom window. It's beautiful, but not nearly as beautiful as the tentacled angel that produces it. Spongebob loves to wake up to the sound of Squidward's blaring clarinet each morning, but he's always been too shy to say it, too scared that Squidward would brush it off as a joke. Yet Spongebob's feelings for Squidward are no joke to him. In fact, the longing to be caressed in Squidward's heavenly tentacles keeps him awake deep into each night, leaving him yearning for that gorgeous squid's touch. Flipping from his window, Spongebob sneaks along the side of Squidward's house, leaning up against it to better hear the angelic melody that wafts through the upstairs window. Wow, that is one talented squid. <laughs> and in addition to his musical prowess, he's also the best artist Spongebob has ever beheld. The few times he snuck into Squidward's art room were the most wondrous moments of his life. <laughs> Walking among all the exquisite self-portraits of that handsome, gangly, six-limbed genius made Spongebob all the more certain of his growing feelings for him. And all the more certain that that dashing squid sure knew how to capture his own best angles. <laughs> Spongebob's heart flops as the squeaky sputtering from the upstairs window stops. Squidward must be finished playing for the day. That almost brings a tear to Spongebob's eye. <laughs> for what? If you've seen Spongebob, you know what Squidward's playing sounds like, <laughs> right? <laughs> Although, as being someone who played the clarinet at one point, I know, <laughs> it is kind of hard to make it sound good. Like, you have to be really good at it to make it not sound horrible. So. so I'll give Squidward the benefit of the doubt in that regard. Just slightly. He can't keep running around his feelings like this. No, it needs to stop. He needs to tell Squidward how he truly feels, face to face, sponge to squid. Otherwise, he's sure his heart is going to burst. He can't just keep kissing the secret picture of Squidward every night. Hiding the photo of his love under a pillow like that. No, now's the time to unleash his true feelings, his true innermost desires. Later that night. Waiting until Gary's fast asleep, Spongebob tiptoes downstairs, his shoes squeaking every step of the way and his heart hammering in his chest. Once he's out the front door, into the quiet warmth of the soggy night, his longing for Squidward's embrace grows with every step he takes towards the love of his life. Could this really be it? Could this really be the night Spongebob's greatest wish comes true? Just as Spongebob goes to grab the doorknob to Squidward's house, the door opens at the same moment, making Spongebob jump back in surprise. But warmth rushes his body to see Squidward standing there, his gelatinous, bulbous nose reflecting the moonlight. <laughs> Should I even bother attempting... Squidward's voice. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely not Spongebob. That is impossible. But Squidward, maybe just like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's give it a try. <sighs> I apologize greatly in advance. <sighs> oh, Spongebob. <laughs> Yuck, you. <ew. laughs> oh, Spongebob. <laughs> Squidward says in surprise, almost looking bashful. Spongebob's surprised when he's not angry to find him at his doorstep at such an hour. Squidward, I just... The nervous sea sponge begins to say, but he can't find the right words. He blushes looking up into Squidward's gorgeous bug eyes, <laughs> wanting to caress his bluish-gray cheek. Spongebob is about to speak when Squidward holds his perfectly slimy tentacle to his lips, shushing him. <laughs> Wait, Squidward says. I need to get something off my chest first. <laughs> 
SpongeBob hopes he's talking about his beautiful baby poop colored shirt, revealing his gorgeously gangly body. The tentacle over SpongeBob's mouth feels gooey and warm against SpongeBob's lips. And he has to fight the urge to lick it. Who wrote this? Who wrote this? They're one sick creep, that's for damn sure. <sighs> Ruining our childhoods like this, okay? <sighs> I, uh, Squidward stammers, looking at the ground. I was actually about to go over to your house, he says. <laughs> he pauses, looking straight into SpongeBob's blue eyes. I, uh, I actually love listening to you sleep. <laughs> Squidward confesses, looking embarrassed. SpongeBob's heart nearly bursts, and he finally does lick the underside of Squidward's perfectly mushy tentacle that's still against his mouth. And it tastes like true love. And musty, greasy slime, of course. Of course. Because why not make everything horrible in this story, right? You do? Spongebob squeals, jumping up and down. Yes, Squidward says, still looking at Spongebob dreamily. And I love the sound of your ear-splitting laughter as well. And honestly, Squidward pauses. I love everything else about you, too. <laughs> Spongebob jumps for joy, enveloping Squidward in the hug he's been dreaming of for so many years. And when Squidward hugs him back, the stickiness of his gooey tentacles against his back is an even better sensation than he could have ever dreamed. He's going to make Squidward one happy squid tonight. <laughs> I think I need to go put Survivor in my bio. I think that's fitting. The thing I gleaned most from that fantastic story was that someone has a thing for Squidward's tentacles. The person who wrote this was a little too descriptive and a little too focused on Squidward's mushy, greasy tentacles or whatever. Ew. They liked writing that. You know they did. You can tell. <laughs> like, why was there such an emphasis on that? Ew. Why would this person do that to Spongebob? I mean, Squidward's fair game, right? But Spongebob's so sweet and, like, innocent and... The injustice is unfathomable. <laughs> I will say for one thing, the person... I guess, could have gotten more descriptive and, like, continue the story into, you know, that territory of stuff we do not want to read. But they didn't. So, I'll give them that. Some kudos, I guess. How much you want to bet there is a second half they wrote, but they kept it for themselves. Like, it could not be posted on the internet because of how vile it was. <laughs> I mean, if you're writing the first half, then you're definitely the person to write the afterwards, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, so that was horrible. <laughs> So with that beautiful fanfic fresh in your mind, have a lovely rest of your day. <laughs>